Sri Iyer, let me ask you this. Uh, at the end of the day, I am a firm believer that technology solves so many problems that we have no solutions of otherwise. Uh, uh, and, and I'm sure you're sil sitting in Silicon Valley with some uh, uh, interesting uh, solutions uh, as far as our unique problem of housing for all. All of it cannot be solved by the government, but at the end of the day, we do need to have pakka housing for all Indians. Can technology help us there? Absolutely. I think what the government should do, in my opinion, is to try and fast track some of the smart city projects, not in the urban metropolis, but in semi-urban and rural metropolis, because what happens is you are starting with a clean piece of paper and you can put in infrastructure such as solar energy, water dis uh, distillation, uh, storage for uh, food, perishable food, and so on and so forth. Build the ecosystem in a smaller villages because then what happens is the villages don't feel the need to go from there and migrate to bigger cities. Today, the cost differential between cities and urban, uh, rural is almost as much as two is to one. Yet, people want to come to the cities because they see no opportunities in the rural areas. So we need to turn that thing around. Don't have to make the people to migrate towards the cities. Okay. Cities are already bursting at the seams. So make the smart city initiative. Focus on making the semi-rural and uh, semi-urban areas to have the smart city initiatives first. Try and make a fist of those and then start working on a bigger city. That way what happens is you slow down this migration and also those people who are in these areas feel that they don't need to go and migrate. Once you have the smart city progress going, you are going to see housing, all the technology will start coming in. I mean, you don't need to make concrete structures in villages. These people, poor people, don't have a lot of things to, you know, keep in safe or something like that. So simple prefabricated housing can be made possible. And I think that's where India should... Uh, and should we rope housing. in the Silicon private Valley. sector? I know, I know for... For low-cost housing, uh, quote unquote affordable housing, which I think I disagree on the on the definition of affordable housing that most of the builders have, but that's a, again a separate conversation. But you know, on on low-cost and affordable housing, you have a lot of uh, private sector participation, but not so much for for the initiative of replacing kacha house with pakka house. There, you don't have any private sector participation. That's true. But there are initiatives such as Housing for All by Sriram Real Estate, uh, which is based out of uh, southern India. They are trying to make this thing possible. They are trying to work on low-cost housing. This is a public-private partnership where government pitches in a little bit. They are also trying to give it at cost. So these things are happening. But remember, India is a big country and there are lots of houses to be built. But the start has been made. Better roads reaching hinterlands will also help. So you're going to start seeing this thing maybe in this five years or maybe in the next five years. But India, okay. every day is better than what it was before. I'm 100% sure of that. Okay, let's, let's now... Alarming the situation is. Shri Ayer, let me, let me come back to you, sir. Yes. I feel, you know, I feel you and I are going to have these conversations very often in the next hundred days because technology is going to provide us those innovative solutions that most of us are grappling to find answers to. Go ahead, sir. Tell us what is it that we can do in such a situation. Um, in the South and, and also in other parts, uh, there have been two main initiatives that have been happening and mostly by people, public, uh, especially in Deep South where it's arid and the monsoon is there only for three months, what the people have done is they started cleaning up all their lakes and tanks that used to be in the middle of the city, but that got, you know, trashed. Essentially, people are throwing trash into their dry tanks. So what they started doing is they started cleaning their tanks so that whenever it rains, they can have some water. That's the first thing. The second thing is there are initiatives run by Art of Living what they do is they revive rivers that have gone dead. And this is not an easy process. It's a very complicated yes. process. And I'm sure as part of that, what they do is they also plant trees at the strategic areas because the trees essentially grab the CO2 and release oxygen. And when there are trees, there is a, a, the clouds are going to collect over right. that and the rain is going to start falling. Right. What I'm going to see, what you're going to see, what we're going to see is apps yeah. that you can actually log into Art of Living 
site and they'll say, okay, we need some resources for this weekend for you to go 100 kilometers and help us plant trees in this specific area. It is being done in a very scientific manner. You will start seeing the results only in a few years, but I already know that in two to three years you start seeing the greenery. It's amazing the kind of satisfaction you get when you plant 10 trees and then suddenly yeah. you start seeing greenery spread around you. It's something just to watch. But tell, and, me, and what, tell me, how do you dazzling. get creative? Tell me, how do you get creative? How do you incentivize people? Because, you know, I remember Kavita yeah. and I were having this conversation about how universities in some parts of the world make it mandatory for you to uh, uh, plant saplings before you get your degree. But what else can we do? Can, can I come well, you know, one thing, that, one thing that we can do is make farming fun. No, no. Like have your own backyard, small patch, greenery patch. You know, there's a lot of fun in starting from the seed, watching your plant grow, harvesting a tomato, you know, eating that. It might cost a lot of time and money, but the pleasure you get is, is immense. Why do you want to go to the market when you can do your own farm in the backyard? Start small, but have the children get involved in it from a very young age. That will keep okay. their interest as they grow okay. and become adults. All right. Yes, Kavita, you so had a suggestion. Uh, seniors. Mr. Ayer, you have to give me one creative idea, sir. I'm going to hold the panel accountable hmm. to give me one creative idea yeah. a day. Absolutely. For today, one of the other <laughs> things that people can do is there is something called a drip <laughs> irrigation. I have seen drip irrigation in some farms in, in the southern India. This should spread all over India because water is also becoming a really, really precious resource. Hmm. And if you use drip irrigation, and just water at the root of the plant, you almost save three to four times the water. Instead of just, you know, wide, you know, spraying the water, you just go to the directly to the root of the plant. And that way you conserve water. And because you have more water, you can successfully plant more things. I mean, planting the plant is just one part. You have to keep them watered and you can use uh, drip irrigation along with some simple uh, electronic instrumentation to get this thing going. You can use solar power to keep this thing going. You don't even need uh, electric power. So these kind of small projects, I'm sure polytechnics, engineering students can do these things as hobby projects at home. And I'll be happy to share some of these things on P Guru's site and, and you can we can share those links Absolutely. as part of our video hangout. Say, go take a look at these things. Okay. I'm really happy to do that.